heart disease is still one of the leading causes of death worldwide. But thanks to medical advancements, like the development of heart organoids, there's new hope. Yes, it's a major step forward. Scientists have developed miniature lab-grown heart tissues that function like real human hearts. These heart organoids are incredibly valuable for research, drug testing, and potentially even future treatments. It's exciting, especially since cardiovascular diseases remain the leading cause of death worldwide. Scientists have taken a big step in using stem cells to repair damaged hearts. A first human trial tested a heart patch made from lab-grown heart muscle. This could become a new treatment for patients with severe heart failure. The research was done by a team of researchers at the University Medical Center, Göttingen, the German Center for Cardiovascular Research, the German Primate Center, and the German Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases. It's a new and promising way to help patients with severe heart failure. The engineered heart muscle, a special tissue-based heart patch, is applied to repair damaged hearts and improve their function. Heart failure weakens the heart's ability to pump blood. This leads to fatigue, shortness of breath, and fluid retention. These conditions affect millions of people. The burden on healthcare systems is massive. That's right, Matt. The heart pumps oxygen-rich blood to the entire body. When it doesn't function properly, multiple organs suffer. That's why researchers are pushing for better treatments. Well, Emma, heart organoids are definitely one of the most promising innovations. But how do they differ from conventional heart transplants? Good question. Traditional heart transplants save lives, but they have challenges. One major issue is immune rejection. The recipient's immune system attacks the transplanted organ. Patients need lifelong immunosuppressive drugs. These drugs help prevent rejection, but also weaken the immune system, making infections more likely. That's why organoid technology is exciting. Scientists can now grow miniature three-dimensional heart structures from stem cells. They can come from a donor or ideally from the patient. If we use a patient's own cells, the immune system won't reject the tissue. This could eliminate the need for immunosuppressive drugs. Hmm, that sounds revolutionary. But does this mean heart organoids could replace heart transplants entirely? Not yet, Matt. Growing a fully functional heart organoid from a patient's cells is still a big challenge. Scientists have successfully created organoids for the liver, kidney, and intestine, but heart organoids need to be much more complex to replace damaged heart tissue. It will take time for heart organoid research to advance enough to fully replace heart transplants. Hmm. I wonder what's so special about growing heart organoids. I mean, what are the major hurdles? Well, let's think about it like this, Matt. The heart is super complex. It's not just made of one type of cell. It has muscle cells that make it pump, pacemaker cells that control the rhythm, and blood vessel cells that keep it alive. Scientists have to recreate all of these in a lab, which isn't easy. One major challenge is ensuring a proper blood supply. A real heart has a dense network of blood vessels to bring oxygen and nutrients. Without this network, lab-grown heart cells stay small and weak, Creating tiny artificial blood vessels in a lab-grown heart is a gigantic task. That makes sense. A heart doesn't just sit there. It beats in a precise rhythm. I guess a big challenge is to make a heart organoid work like a real heart. Absolutely right, Matt. Scientists are working to create larger, more complex organoids that can fully integrate with the human body. There are already lab-grown heart tissues which can contract on their own. But the question remains, are they strong enough or coordinated as a real heart? Scientists are working on ways to make them more functional. And of course, there's the problem of making them at scale. If we ever want to use heart organoids in medicine, they need to be reliable, consistent, and easy to produce. Right now, that's a big challenge. Hmm. In this scenario, the human trial of implantable heart patches performed in Göttingen, Germany, is truly revolutionary. But there are both ethical and technical challenges. The use of stem cells raises ethical concerns. 
Plus, standardizing organoid production is still a work in progress. I wonder how did they manage to get the permission of human trial despite these hurdles? Uh, that's a great point, Matt. Getting approval for this clinical trial wasn't easy. The clinical trial came after 25 years of preclinical developments. Even after that, the Paul Ehrlich Institute, the regulatory authority in Germany, needed strong proof that the heart patches were both safe and effective before allowing human trials. To gather this evidence, researchers first tested the patches on rhesus macaques, a type of monkey, at the German Primate Center. This step was crucial because it mimicked real clinical conditions, helping scientists show that these patches could work in humans. What's really exciting is that these implanted heart patches contained up to 200 million cells and actually helped repair damaged heart muscle. This process is called remuscularization. Imaging and tissue analysis confirmed that the new heart muscle cells stayed in place under immune suppression and improved the heart's pumping ability. I see. So these investigations on monkeys were crucial for getting approval for the world's first human trial to repair the heart using tissue-engineered heart muscle implants. It's incredible to think that something developed in a lab is now being tested in people with advanced heart failure. This really shows how far regenerative medicine has come. Yes, a 46-year-old woman with advanced heart failure received a patch made from donor cells at the University Medical Center Göttingen. Three months later, her heart developed a new blood supply. This suggests the patch can successfully integrate with heart tissue. But since donor cells were used, she still needed immunosuppressive treatment. That makes me think, if donor cells can be used, these patches could eventually become off-the-shelf treatments, ready for patients who need urgent care. The only downside is that it takes months for the patches to show results, which makes them less practical for emergencies. Right, but if these engineered muscle grafts consistently improve heart function, they could provide a much needed alternative for patients who have few treatment options left. This isn't about replacing heart transplants entirely. It's about giving doctors another tool. Severe heart failure has high mortality rates, and a therapy like this could save lives. Exactly. When you consider the bigger picture, the need for such new heart treatments is urgent. Heart failure affects 60 million people worldwide. Even with the best medical care, one in five patients with heart failure will die within a year. And half of those diagnosed today won't be alive in five years. That's a sobering reality. As technology improves, we might see even better versions of these patches. They could mature faster and integrate more seamlessly with heart tissue. With heart organoids, stem cell patches, and implantable muscle grafts, cardiology is evolving fast. If research continues at this pace, we could see even more groundbreaking treatments soon. Well, advancements in medical treatments and technologies will improve patient outcomes. But it's also important to focus on preventive measures, promoting healthy lifestyles to reduce the incidence of risk factors like obesity and hypertension. That's for sure. It's clear that addressing heart failure requires a multifaceted approach, combining prevention, early detection, and equitable access to care. Efforts are underway to improve access to health care, enhance patient education, and promote early intervention in high-risk communities. <laughs>